So between the blue moon and the Perseids meteor shower, you'd almost forget that Saturn is at its biggest the upcoming month and it will be visible all night long. So how's that possible? Well, Saturn will be in opposition on September 9th this month, meaning that the Earth will be exactly in between the Sun and Saturn, making this month the best month to view the mesmerizing ring planet in the night sky. So join me on my little astro balcony here for another nerdy night of planet hunting. Saturn is the second largest planet in the solar system after good old Jupiter. By latest count it has 146 moons and yes, some of those are even visible through your telescope. Planets like Saturn are one of the easiest and most exciting objects to watch through your telescope. The mesmerizing rings around Saturn stretch out for 270,000 kilometers. And yet, they are only about 10 to 100 meters thick. The theory goes that a couple of million years ago, two icy moons collided and shattered, giving us this magnificent view we have of the planet today. So this year, due to changing positions in orbit around the Sun, we will see the rings of Saturn almost face on, and it will be a little bit harder to spot that Cassini division. But hey, that's not going to be a showstopper for me. So to the naked eye, Saturn will appear as this yellowish star in the night sky. But if you have some binoculars or a small telescope, you will already see a disk around that planet. So if you have a larger telescope like this one, you're going to be able to see the Cassini division that's a gap between Saturn's rings, and you will also be able to see some surface details of its cloudy atmosphere. So instead of using an eyepiece, I'm going to use this dedicated planetary camera to photograph Saturn. Although it will be more like taking short videos at a very high speed. The camera attaches to the back of your telescope, as you can see here, instead of an eyepiece that you would normally use to view the planet. The camera is very sensitive and it can record at a very high speed. I'll use specialized software to take videos of about two minutes at a high frame rate. I then extract the best frames out of that video, which are the ones with the least amount of atmospheric disturbance. So to get the highest frame rates possible, you're going to be needing a short USB 3.0 cable to connect your planetary camera to a laptop like this Lenovo laptop I'm going to be using tonight. So lots of astronomers use Barlow lenses like this one to magnify the view of the planets in the night sky. You can just simply attach your planetary camera to a Barlow lens like this one, but actually the pixels on this particular planetary camera are so tiny that I'm not going to be needing this Barlow lens. I will be using a UV IR cut filter to get a better color balance. Astrophotographers love to talk about their astro gear, but actually the weather conditions may be even more important for taking a high quality picture of a planet. Tonight we have some haze in the night sky, it's pretty humid, but at least we don't have a lot of wind. Apart from the weather conditions, altitude also matters. For me here in the Netherlands at 52 degrees latitude, Saturn will not get any higher than 30 degrees in the night sky. But if you live closer to the equator, Saturn will be much higher in the night sky, giving you less atmosphere to worry about. If you're new to the hobby, this is a harmonic drive mount and together with the ASI Air it helps me to find and track Saturn in the night sky so I don't need to manually adjust the position of the telescope while photographing Saturn. So before using this harmonic drive mount, I first will perform a polar alignment procedure with the ASI Air to align this harmonic drive mount with the North Celestial Pole. And after that, it's straight to Saturn. So I want to give a quick shout out to High Point Scientific and Apertura for sending me this 580 watt all night power supply. So this power supply has DC, AC and USB 3.0 outputs to power your Astro Gear. It also comes with a high speed USB-C output to power your phone or your laptop. 
I've been going all night with this and I'm still above 90% charged. So I can finally get rid of all those long outdoor extension cords. I use SharpCap on my laptop to run the camera. This capturing software can confirm that I have a sharp focus on Saturn and I'm able to adjust the gain and exposure levels of the camera to make sure Saturn is well exposed also by checking the live histogram. So when you're recording a two minute video of Saturn at high speeds like 100 frames per second or higher, you're going to end up with a file size of two or three gigabytes per video. So be sure to get a laptop that has sufficient storage capacity so you don't run out of space during the night of imaging. From here, I use a software tool called AutoStackerd to analyze and select the best frames in the video and stack them all into a final image that I can process even further. I usually stack about 25 to 50% of the best quality frames in the video, depending on the quality. I honestly think that sky conditions have a much greater influence on your final result than the number of frames you choose to stack. For subscribers to my channel, I have a free three hour video course on planetary imaging where I go into more depth to explain this process. Here's that live view of planet Saturn through my telescope on my laptop right now. Isn't that amazing? 8.7 astronomical units away or 1.3 billion kilometers away from Earth. There it is, up close. This type of experience makes us feel so humble. The world gets a whole lot smaller when you look at that yellow dot of Saturn and wonder about how small the Earth looks from Saturn. Or in the words of Carl Sagan, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was lived out their lives on that pale blue dot. <laughs>